Brazil is the largest country of South America and the fifth largest of the planet. It's a land of paradox and contrast. Urban sprawls exist side by side with vast unspoiled regions still a far cry from the modern world. Forests and rivers are characteristic features of Brazil. When the Europeans discovered this new world, the majestic rivers were their gateways into the vast inland territories. Guasu River is the home of the last Saveiros. These flat bottom craft were perfectly adapted for sailing the rivers and close to the shore. For centuries, the Saveiros would ship the materials necessary for the construction of the villages and religious buildings. Like the Sao Antonio Monastery built in the 17th century by French monks. The Franciscans established this mission on the river to convert the native populations. São Antonio is the country's second oldest Catholic church. When the monastery was being built, the Paraguasu River was Brazil's major commercial artery. The Chapada Diamantina, situated less than 500 kilometers from the Atlantic coast, is a land of mountains, canyons, and wide open spaces. In the mid-19th century, the Chapada Diamantina was the scene of an incredible diamond rush. Thousands of adventurers flocked here to try their luck. When I first came to the Chapada Diamantina, no one ever visited this place. It was, there was no road up, no, no way to get here. And I said to myself, I said, wow, I found it. This is the place. And it was just like love at first sight. In the late 1970s, Roy was 30 years old and living in the United States, dreaming of adventure. Then he discovered Brazil. I really didn't decide, it was decided for me. And the place just, just grabbed me. And I said, wow, yeah, I can handle that. I love it. So uh, I just stayed. And just never even thought about leaving. It's just a, a great place. It's my, I found my spot in the world. It's, uh, I think everyone should look and, and uh, try to find it. Some people are lucky, I was lucky, I found it. Every day, Roy hikes the trails of these mountains that nourish the dreams of thousands of diamond hunters and adventurers. To repay this country for all it has given him, Roy has become an amateur historian. Just to show you, this is a, it's an old mining structure here. It was a, a corjida. They would put water down, down this, this ramp here. 90% of the work of a diamond mine here is bringing water to your claim, to your mine. Because what diamond mining is, is separating a couple of milligrams of carbon crystals, of diamonds, from tons of sand and rock and mud and other things. And the only way you can do that is with water. So they, they've, the mountains are full of aqueducts here. 
small ones, big ones, uh, all over the place that bring the water from the river or collect it from rainfall and direct it toward their mines. Roy is going to spend the night in the mountains in an old diamond prospector's cabin. Roy fought intensely to protect the Chapada Diamantina. He campaigned for the region to be declared a natural reserve. Then, in the 1980s, the Brazilian government decided to create a natural park. And since there has to be someone to manage it, Roy was quite naturally recruited for the job. Yeah, I said, well, it, sound, it sounded like a really great, uh, a really great thing, and, and it was interesting. And uh, but basically, they just gave me uh, a 38 gun and a, and a badge and a jeep, and said, <laughs> go get them, you know, make a park. So I was director and the guard and the secretary and the driver. Uh, it was everything in one. It was only me. So out in the middle of 1,500 square kilometers of park. So I was a, a prophet in the wilderness. Roy has become a local personality. Thanks to his efforts, the Chapada Diamantina is once again a land of exploration, a paradise for hikers and people in search of wide open spaces. In the 1980s, you had to be slightly mad to settle in this old colonial town. Roy has founded a family here. He's become a Brazilian citizen, and he's committed to the protection of this land that has gradually become his own. Day after day, Roy puts pen to paper. He's drawing up maps to keep the memory of this land alive. <laughs> The idea is to put this down on paper before it's lost, to, to get their history remembered and permanent, whereas now it's very, it's very volatile. It's all in their, in all in their heads. And, uh, and like I say, they're the, this is the last generation of the old time miners. So we either get this information down now or it's lost forever. Roy is now 62, and he still tirelessly hikes through the hills of the region. Today, Anicio, the oldest of the diamond hunters, is out walking with him. This old friend of Roy's is a precious witness, the living memory of the region. There's a chamber inside. You're sheltered in there. It's very big. This is a toca, a cave. The diamond hunters used it as a makeshift shelter. They live here for weeks on end. Wow, it's really neat. Oh, I need a light, though. <laughs> wow, oh, oh. These galleries wear a man down. Prospecting for diamonds means working in the dam. When you get over 40, you're finished. The stones are cold, you know, and there are a lot of mosquitoes, so we always had to have a fire going. I think of all the others who used to live this life and who are now gone. I think about the past, the old timers. Back then in the diamond sites, 
everyone would get together on Saturdays around a big pot of feijoada. And we'd all eat together. We were all friends. the locals will remember this American who traveled from New York and happened onto this place. They'll probably say they'd see him head off into the mountains every day. The ones that knew him will be able to tell how the life of this quiet American was a story of love at first sight between a man and nature. A strange land. It looks like a desert that the rains have not abandoned. In the Lenchois do Maranhenses, a mystical alchemy has blended everything together. This is a scorched landscape made up of ocean, wind, sand, and the fresh water of the lagoons. Joyosun is 25 years old. He's treading the land of his childhood. He lives in a small town two days' walk from this spot, here where he was born. Whenever he can, he comes back to the Lenchois to visit his parents who live in this desert near the equator in Brazil's Nordeste region. Here I'm free. In town, you're not really free to do what you like. Everyone has their own little space. When I come here, almost all of it is mine. It's like a dream come true. I'm at peace, and that doesn't happen in town. Before, there was no one living here. In the 1950s, Joya Sun's family, fleeing a severe drought in the Sertão, an arid inland region of Brazil, decided to settle in an oasis in the Lenchois. To survive, Joya Sun's ancestors came to a desert where fresh water can be found just beneath the surface of the sand. Joyason is always glad to see his horse when he comes back. He named him Great Tiger, and he's an ideal mount for galloping across the dunes. In the rainy season, countless freshwater lagoons form on the surface. They're not a mirage like you'd find in other deserts the world over. They're very real. Lenchois means linen in Portuguese, and indeed, this white expanse looks like a sheet dried by the sun and buffeted by the wind.
The rainy season has just begun. It lasts six months and completely transforms the landscape. The scorching heat and the influence of the ocean, the Lenchois suffer the effects of the weather. The lagoons are formed by water from aquifers lying just beneath the surface of the sand. This bounty of fresh water is the source of life in this arid environment. In just a few weeks, the plant and animal life reflourish in the Lenchois lagoons after lying dormant through months of drought. It's a peninga. They're quite scarce. It lives in the lagoons, in the water for six months, and then it burrows down into the sand for six months. It's lucky to be able to live like that in the lagoons. I protect them from the predators. I've always done that. I'm going to take this one and move it to a deeper lagoon because I think it's not doing too well here. to grasp the dimensions of this bewitching land. In this vast desert, distances are measured in days. Joyosun has learned to adapt to this environment where man-made time evaporates and one has to cling to life. Eu nasci e me criei aqui. I was born here. I grew up in the Baixa Grande Oasis. When I was seven, I started going out with my father to tend the livestock. We'd go out into the Lenchois for two, three days at a time. We'd sleep outside, no tent or anything. The dunes would be our walls, our shelter. And to sleep, we'd dig out a sort of bed in the sand. Joyosun is on his way to visit his community on the vast beaches that border the desert. During the rainy season, fishermen set up temporary encampments on the shore. Fishing is the principal activity and the main source of revenue for these communities. It's a collective effort, everyone doing their part. Then they share out the catch among the families. We got a lot of fish, and we're going to catch even more. It's not always like this. It depends on the season. Sometimes we don't catch anything. Today we'll get 20, 30 kilos, but sometimes you end up with no more than five or six fish in the net. It depends. Oh, 
Depois de secar, a gente vamos We dry them and then we sell them. A cavalo. We could sell these in two days. It depends on the number of buyers. Faz e The fish we don't sell will allow us to get through the next three or four days before we go out fishing again. And that's how we manage. Joya Sun's family lives here. In the dry season, they tend their flocks. The rest of the time, they farm and fish. The inhabitants of the Lenchois live almost completely on their own, cut off from the rest of the world in their two oases. Nature is not very generous here, but they do manage to grow vegetables and some fruit. In the rainy season, they harvest cashew nuts, which they then sell or barter in the neighboring villages. The cashew harvest begins with the rainy season. But since the shale is very fragile, the rain can ruin the nuts. If water gets inside, the nut rots and it's no good anymore. Out of 50 kilos of cashew nuts, we sometimes end up with no more than 20 kilos that are good. The rest gets damaged by the rain. Joya Sun grew up on this land, far from the bustling world, here where nature and beauty are so much more imposing than man. This landscape of shifting sand and water radiates a certain harmony. The Lenchois do Maranhenses are a haven where the inhabitants seem to be waiting for something. The Lenchois possess a fascinating allure. Tinted with colors of a voyage in counterpoint to every other place on Earth. I'm proud to live in and be part of this place. For me, it's a dream. It's the best place in the world, that's for sure. This is my place. It's wonderful. I'm going to stay here. I'm really happy. I'll never leave. I think I'll stay here forever.